Rhinoceros by Eugene Inesco. Plot summary. Rhinoceros begins in a small town square where Jean, an efficient, refined young man, meets his semi-alcoholic and fully apathetic friend, Beringer, for a drink. Jean upbraids Beringer for his drinking habits and his aimlessness. Soon, a rhinoceros runs through the square, shocking all the townspeople with the exception of the indifferent Beringer. Jean lectures Beringer about willpower while a rational logician explains the concept of a syllogism to an old man. Beringer concedes that he has a crush on Daisy, a typist at his office, but worries that she favors Duded, an up-and-coming co-worker. Jean recommends willpower and cultural self-improvement to garner Daisy's affections, and to improve his life in general. Another rhino rushes by and tramples a cat. The townspeople debate whether or not it was the same rhino and what breed it was. Beringer and Jean get in a fight over the physical specifics of the rhino, and Jean storms off after calling Beringer a drunkard. The townspeople ask the logician to clear up confusion, but his lengthy analysis makes no progress. The townspeople vow to stop the rhinos. Beringer expresses remorse for fighting with Jean, then says he's too upset to culture himself as planned and instead drinks. In Beringer's office, the co-workers argue with Batard, an old skeptic who doesn't believe in the rhinos. Beringer arrives late, but Daisy sneaks him in. The employees ask Beringer if he saw the rhino. Batard claims the illusory appearance of the rhino is an example of collective psychosis. They return to work, proofreading law proposals, and wonder where co-worker Mr. Burf is. Mrs. Burf rushes in and says her husband is sick and will be back in a few days. She tells them that she was just chased by a rhino, which is now downstairs. The rhino crushes the staircase it tries to ascend, stranding the workers. Mrs. Burf recognizes the rhino as her husband. Daisy telephones the fire station to rescue them. The men give Mrs. Berth practical advice for dealing with this setback, but she is too devoted to her rhino husband and vows to stay with him. She jumps down to the ground floor and, off stage, rides off on his back. More rhinos are reported in the town. The firemen arrive to help him out the window. Batard vows he'll solve the rhino riddle. Beringer passes on an offer to drink with Duded so he can visit Jean. Jean coughs in bed at home. Beringer visits and apologizes for their argument the previous day. At first, Jean has no recollection at all about the rhinoceroses. Jean's voice grows more hoarse, a bump on his nose continues to grow, and his skin gets greener by the moment. He becomes more misanthropic and savage. Beringer informs him of Mr. Berth's transformation, which Jean applauds. He moves in and out of the bathroom, each time appearing and sounding more like a rhino. He pronounces humanism dead, sheds his itchy clothes, tries to run down Beringer, apologizes, and runs into the bathroom. Beringer is about to escape, but follows Jean into the bathroom to help him. Off stage in the bathroom, Jean attacks Beringer. Beringer escapes and closes the bathroom door behind him, but is pierced by a rhino horn as Jean, now a full-blown rhino, tries to break free. Beringer alerts the tenants in the building to the Reno's presence in the building, but everyone else has transformed as well. Beringer looks out the window, where a herd of rhinos march. The bathroom door is on the verge of breaking. Beringer throws himself against the wall and breaks through it. He runs through the street, yelling, Rhinoceros. Beringer wakes up from a nightmare in his room and inspects himself for any impending rhino signs. Still human, he struggles not to drink, but eventually does. Duded visits and they discuss Jean's transformation, which Beringer feels guilty about. They discuss the metamorphoses as an epidemic. Beringer takes another drink, under the premise that alcohol is an immunization. Duded urges Beringer not to feel too guilty. Duded reveals that Papillon, 
their boss, has turned into a rhinoceros. Berenger believes that for a man of Papillon's human stature to change, it must have been involuntary. Dudid considers the metamorphoses natural, while Berenger continues to find them abnormal. The flustered Berenger says he will seek the logician's services in clearing this up. A herd of rhinos passes and Berenger spots the logician's hat on a rhinoceros, a sign of metamorphosis, and vows not to become one as well. Daisy visits Berenger, which makes Dudid jealous. Daisy appears not to care too deeply about the epidemic. She informs them that Batard has metamorphosed. Berenger can't believe it, but then later rationalizes it. Daisy and Dudid iterate that acclimating oneself to the rhinos is the best solution, but Berenger resists. They start to have lunch, but are interrupted by a crumbling wall outside. The fire station has been sacked, and the firemen have turned into rhinos. Dudid leaves. He wants to experience the epidemic firsthand. Berenger tries to stop him, but Daisy lets him go. Dudid soon turns into a rhino outside. The sights and sounds of the rhinos become more beautiful despite their savagery. Berenger laments Dudid's demise, and Daisy reminds Berenger that they have no right to interfere in others' lives. She pours some brandy for Berenger and removes his bandage, still no signs of a transformation. Berenger claims he will defend her. He blames himself and Daisy for contributing, through lack of sympathy, to the transformations of Jean and Papillon, respectively. Daisy convinces him to shrug off the guilt. The phone rings, but they hear only Rhino trumpeting on the line. They turn to the radio for help but the rhinos have taken that over as well. Upstairs, a rhino stampede disrupts the house's foundations. Daisy believes they must adapt to their new neighbors, but Berenger proposes they regenerate the human race, like Adam and Eve. Daisy finds the power of the rhino seductive. Berenger slaps her, then apologizes and declares that he'll never surrender and that he will protect her. She pledges her loyalty to him. The noise of the rhinos becomes more musical to Daisy, though Berenger still finds it savage and argues with her. Daisy breaks up with him and leaves. Berenger barricades his room and plugs his ears. He doubts his own humanity. He inspects photographs and cannot recognize any of his former friends, but he does identify himself and hangs three of his pictures on the wall beside the rhino heads. They turn out to be pictures of unattractive people and, compared to the elegant rhino heads, are even more grotesque. He envies the bodies of the rhino, left alone on stage, Berenger grapples with his own sanity. For the first time, he contemplates becoming a rhinoceros himself, but he snaps out of it decisively. He ends the play with a strong commitment to his humanity his individuality, and his morality, I'm not capitulating.